So far, we're trying to use an XML document to define our beans, but using an XML document may not be a right choice every time. For example, say that I'm trying to change the name of these Java files, then there won't be any kind of a highlighting in the XML document indicating that the change has happened. This is going to be a bit of a concern, especially when you're working on a large scale projects. Because in order to test your changes, you have to build the entire project and then deploy the artifact onto the server. And then you will realize that the application has crashed because of a small typo error in your XML config. That is going to be a very frustrating moment for a developer. Also, it would be hard to refactor your code when you're trying to configure things using XML file. So since spring version number three, we have a solution to address this very problem. And the solution is, you can now configure all your beans in a Java file. So let's see how it's done. I have the exact same code as previous, but the only change is I have now changed the name of the bean.java to animalnoise.java for two good reasons. The name bean is conflicting with the name bean in Spring. It's not a good practice to use that name. And number two, this name makes more sense. So let us see how we can configure our beans using a Java config. So for this purpose, I'm actually going to create a new folder inside our package. And the name of it is going to be simply config. So this is where all our config files would remain. Well, I said config files, meaning that we can have multiple configurations split across multiple files. And we're going to take a look at it at a later point of time, or maybe pretty soon. So now let's try to create a Java file inside that folder. Basically a class file. I'm going to give the name as Java config. You can give any name of your choice. And then here, we're just simply going to define our beans. And we're trying to replicate the same thing that we're trying to do here. So let me try to imitate the same bean in our Java config. So all I have to do now is to create a method that just simply returns an instance of animal, or rather cat to be more specific. So I'm just simply going to define a public method, public, and is going to return an object of animal. I'm going to name this method as simply animal. So this is going to be the name of the bean that we will use in our code. And within the curly braces, we're just simply going to use the written statement, return a new instance of either cat or dog. Let's start with dog. And with a semicolon, I'll do Control Shift O to import all the required classes and interfaces. And I'll do Control Shift F to give a proper indentation to our code. Now we need to explicitly mention Spring that this file is a config file within which we'll have our beans. And this in here is a bean. That we can do by specifying the following annotations. You would say configuration. So now Spring will start looking for beans in this file. And then we're going to give the bean annotation to tell Spring that we're trying to define a bean in here. It's as simple as that. Now let us also try to configure this bean in here. I'm just simply going to copy the same method, but this time I'm going to return an instance of animal noise. And same should get reflected in here. You can give any name of your choice to this method. That's fine. I'll do Control Shift O. Let me pull this down. Now just like we're trying to pass an argument to the constructor of animal noise, we have to do the same stuff in here as well. I'm just simply going to call this method 
from here. So this would essentially pass a new instance of dog to the constructor of animal noise just as we're trying to do in here. Nothing different. And guess what? We just declared all our beans inside a Java config file. Now inside our main logic, instead of using class path XML application, I'm going to copy this and use a different implementation of application context that will help create a context using a Java config. And the instruction that I'm going to use is annotation control space to give some suggestion config application context. And of course we would no longer provide XML as an argument. This has to be our Java config file. Dot class let me pull this in here so that you have a better view. So that's all there is to it. Let's run the program and see if things are working. Sure enough, it worked. Now let's try to change this to cat. I would say cat, save the file and run the program and we seem to have an error that's because we haven't imported the cat class I'll do control shift O and uh, let's run the program and sure enough we have a different output now let's say that I found this name animal noise little misleading I'm going to change the name to something else maybe I would name it as animal sound now guess what we have syntax highlighting everywhere including this java config file. That's the beauty of it. Whereas if you go to the XML document, you don't see any difference. So we can just uh, rename the file and replace the name everywhere else. So this is a lot easier. And this should do. I'll save the file and same thing should get reflected in here and run the program everything is smooth so which one is better should we use XML file or the Java config well it depends on your requirements but if you're not sure of which one to use I would suggest you to go with Java config as of the time of this recording I would say to the most part industry is still using XML configs but sooner or later industry is going to move towards using a Java config because of its benefits. So all the Java config is not a popular way to define your beans as of now. It is going to be the future. So for that reason even I would be inclined towards using Java config over an XML document or I will try to use mix of both. That way you will get to know how things are configured in both these files. But again, I will try to use both, but I won't promise. I would either go with Java config, which would most likely be the case, or XML document, or both. So let's see how it goes in coming videos. Also, if you're using XML document, I want to quickly talk about another implementation of application context, which will let you configure the XML file that resides in your computer. And the implementation that I'm talking about is file system XML application context. And in here as an argument you would give the path to that XML file. But of course more often it's always better to use an XML document that resides in the class path over giving a file path in your local file system. But likewise we also have many other implementations which we're not concerned about right now, they would come into picture when you're trying to use Spring to develop web applications. So for now, we're not talking about them. Let me undo the changes and I'll see you in my next video. As of now, since our application is very small, we don't really have to configure a lot of beans, but more often in real world projects, we might need to configure hundreds of beans. In that case, it may not be an ideal choice 
to list down all the beans that existed in your application in a single config file. We might want to split that config file into multiple config files and each file would constitute a list of related beans. That way it is easier to manage. For example, let's say that you have an e-commerce application. In that case, you might have a config file with list of beans whose responsibility is to manage the customer orders. And then you may have another config file which may have beans that are related to payment processing, etc. In this video, we're going to take a look at how we can manage multiple config files. So in this video, we're going to take a look at how we can manage to have multiple config files. First, let's talk about XML configuration. So in here, I have defined a couple of beans. Now let's say that I wanted to split this XML file into multiple files. So I'm just going to make a copy of this file. You can give any name of your choice. I'm going to leave it to config2.xml. And inside this file, I'd like to define this bean. So I'll get rid of the other one from here. Save the file. And in here, I'd like to keep this and get rid of this. Now we need to do something that will connect these two config files. And the tag that I'm going to use to serve that purpose is import. And you would set an attribute, resource, that just points to the config2.xml. It's as simple as that. That's all there is to it. Now, if you run the program, everything will work as expected. Pretty straightforward. So this instruction is as good as importing all the list of beans that are available in this file to this file. Now let's take a look at how we can do the same in Java config file. So I'll go here and make a copy of Java config. I'm going to leave the name to java config 2java Let me open that up. Okay, now similar to what we have done with XML config, we're going to do the same in here as well. So I'll get rid of this bean from here, but I would keep it in the original config file. And just like we did an import in here, we're going to do exact same thing with an annotation. I'll say at the rate import and inside the parenthesis I would just say java config2 dot class. But since we don't have this method in here we have to pass that as a parameter. And things will work smoothly. Now we don't really have to get into internals of how this is working, who is passing the parameter etc. It would all be taken care of by the Spring Framework when you have this annotation at the rate bean. Let's go to our program and try to see if things are working. I'm going to uncomment that line and run the program and it worked well. You can also mix both Java config and XML config if you wish. So let's see how it's done. All you have to do now is instead of using the import annotation, you would say import resource and you would provide the class path of that XML file. For that you have to mention class path and then a colon and then the name of the XML. So that's going to be config2.xml and let's see if things are working. Sure enough, it worked. Well, same thing can be done from XML file as well, but it is a bit of a task. So let me just quickly pause the video, make those changes and then I'll come back. So here we are again and in order to include a Java config, into an XML file, you have to now introduce the following namespace 
into your XML file. And in addition to that, you also have to include the following schema locations in order for it to work. After which, you would define this tag that just simply tells Spring that you're trying to use a Java config and then you can define all your Java configs by using the bean tag, just as you see in here. And make sure that you include the complete package name as well. And that's all there is to it. Now this is as good as including all the beans defined in here in your XML file. But make sure that you're now using the names that you have given to the methods. So let's run the program and see if things are working. And sure enough, it did. Let's try to change this to say cat and run the program and things will work. Oops, we have to import the class in here and run the program. Should work. So Spring offers a lot of flexibility to mix and match multiple config files and to configure your beans. And when we talk about auto wiring, we will talk more on similar lines. So I will see you soon.